What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Getting into this episode of GH, um, this was a lot of mess. Um, <laughs> who the hell died and made Christina Cupid? Like, seriously, her going to Nina and trying to, you know, be Cupid and play Cupid and hope that, you know, her and Sonny could get back together. I'm like, Christina, go, go find you something to do, okay? Um, I enjoyed the Maxi and Nina scenes. I really did because Maxi was preaching. Let me just say, I love the new wardrobe that they are putting on Maxi. Like they got her looking good. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got her with the hobo look, you know, like I ain't like some of them options they was putting on her because it just, it wasn't flattering. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that wardrobe stepped it up, you know, and put, started putting Maxi into some, some nice, nicer things. Um, that compliment her. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed, you know, Maxie's conversation with Nina because she was spitting the truth. At the end of the day, Nina need to go sit down somewhere. Like she really do. Stop doing all these overtures to try to get Sonny back. Oh, should I send him a card? Should I send him something? For what? For And I agree with Maxie. For what? For him to throw it in the garbage? Because that's what he going to do. He going to tear it up, throw it in the trash. Why Why waste a little, little dollar? on a car <laughs> why for what like nina needs to fall back you know what i'm saying you are the publisher the invader you are co-owner of the metro court and you are back as editor-in-chief of crimson you have enough to do focus on those things you know what i'm saying stop trying to focus on this dumbass marriage like if that man want to divorce sign the damn papers and thank your lucky stars that you're away from him i'm just saying like stop begging it's just, it's sad to see it. Like, you know, groveling and all that for somebody that ain't checking for you. Like, stop. And, you know, her relying on Ava, I'm like, yeah, that's going to backfire on her ass because she is heavenly relying on Ava. Oh, that's my, oh, she advocating for me. Little do you know <laughs> what's really going on at that penthouse because it sure ain't advocating for you. Um, And I agree with Maxie because Maxie was like, nope, Ava not doing nothing for nobody unless... It got something to do with Ava, unless Ava getting something out the deal, you know, because she don't trust Ava, nor should she. Um, and I totally agree with Maxie when she said, if you got a plot to keep a man, then that's not a man you should want. I said, you better preach. You better preach, Max. Maxie was preaching. And I really hope Nina was listening to the word. <laughs> Listen to the words, Nina. Now, I, I agreed a thousand percent with Maxie. You don't want him if you got the plot to get him or keep him. You don't want them. And I'm pretty sure Maxie be talking from experience. Cause <laughs> don't think Maxie ain't plot to get somebody now. Um, you know, that's experience talking. Like, and she ain't lying. She ain't lying. Everything Maxie said was the God honest truth. She is not lying. Stop trying to plot to get and keep somebody. That ain't somebody that you should want. You know what I'm saying? If you put your heart out there to somebody and tell them how you feel or apologize to them and they still don't want you back or whatever, then move on. Move on. You've done all you can do. Move on. Stop pining away from that person. And Nina, I feel like she's still not going to get the message. Oh, I still, you know, I, I still got hope for my marriage. See, you can't talk to people like that. See, people like Nina that, that live in that Delulu world, you can't talk to them because they're not, they hearing you, but they're not hearing you. You know what I'm saying? It, it just goes in one ear and right back out the other. You, I would just shut my mouth. Nina, uh, Maxie said all she could say to Nina. She don't want to hear it. I ain't giving no more information. I'm shutting my mouth. Um, I don't know how Blaze is going to work as the new face of deception. I got to see because with her mama crossing out all that stuff in the contract, that got me a little worried because <laughs> she was crossing out hella stuff. And I'm like, um, so if you're going to cross all this stuff out the contract, why do we need her as the spokes model or the model? For what? If you, oh, she not doing this. So she not, so if she not going to do all that, then... <laughs> She just going to stand there and take a photo. I mean, you could pick up your phone and, and take a selfie. You know, you could just. What y'all paying her for? Crossing all that shit out. Get, get the hell on. And I know Christina happy her boo. You know, she rising up. I'm like, that's right, Christina. You got somebody that's making a little change. Uh, <laughs> she making she making deception money now, even though it should be small deception money, considering all them damn cross outs. I'm just saying like, mm -mm, nope. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, I'm tired. 
I'm tired. I feel like there's no movement. And there's been months of the same conversation between um, Sasha and Cody. I feel like there's been, there's no movement. It's like every time I see them, they're having the same conversation. Oh, you know, I know that you're not ready to move on. Oh, yeah, but I enjoy what we got already. And uh, Move this shit on, please. Move it along. Do something with them. Either write them out or write for them. I'm just saying because they're going to be on my screen and I got to watch them. Have them do something, please, other than scoop out horse shit. Thank you. Um, And I'm getting tired of Cody holding on to this damn Mac. I guess they're waiting for Mac to come back, I suppose. I think that's what they're waiting for. Maybe they're waiting for John York to come back. I hope he's doing better. I hope um, his diagnosis is, you know, his treatments are going well. Um, definitely praying for him. Um, but I can't wait to see him back because also it's going to be great to see Mac. But I also can't wait for the story to finally be over. You know, he can know that that's his son because I'm tired of the same conversation with him. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Dante, I'm happy he's awake, but I feel bad for him already. I feel bad because when Christina came to see him, I just felt like this man, the only time Dante got a chance to rest was when he was in a coma. This man just woke up out of a coma and all Christina could talk about is Sonny's latest problems. Oh, you should spend time with dad because he's blaming himself for this. And it's weird that Ava's living with him. I mean, we all know that. But this man just woke up from a coma. He was shot. And prior to him getting shot, he was working all the time. He was working on every case. Barely getting any damn sleep at home. Anytime you saw Dante, he working. Where Dante at working. And the only time he got to sleep was in that coma. And you mean to tell me... When he wake up, not only do he got Sam in his ear yapping on about Danny and Jason, he got to worry about you coming up in here, getting him to fix Sunny latest drama. I felt so bad for him. I said, you mean to tell me you got a bullet hole, two bullets in you? Was in a coma. Woke up from the coma. And now you got to clean up Sonny's latest mess. They don't let that man rest. I would, I, listen, I would call Jason right now. Tell him to come meet me at the hospital. I will take out a gun, hand it to him, and tell him put me back in the coma because I need more rest. <laughs> I'm not even playing with you. That's what I would do if I was Dante. Cause that, that seems to be the only way he's going to get some peace and quiet and some rest is if he's back in that coma. That, that don't make no sense. Like, this man ain't even got out the hospital good. Ain't even went home and rest. And already, everybody, all of this, all of this. I'm like, nope. If I was Dante, I would have been like, silence, and told them to get the hell out. <laughs> Dead serious. Because that don't make no sense. Um, I will say this about Sam. I feel like she barking up the wrong tree. I feel like Sam is barking up the wrong tree because her... Thinking that she's going to keep Danny away from Jason, it will backfire. It will have dire consequences for her. I, I mean that because I feel like her trying to keep Danny away from Jason, it it's nothing good is going to come from that. Even if she thinks she's doing the right thing, it's, it's not going to look like the right thing in Danny's eyes. He's going to continue to rebel. He's going to get worse. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's going to get worse. So I think Sam might want to rethink that tactic. Don't get me wrong. I get where she's coming from. I get it. But you need to find a different tactic. Because look what happened when Alexis tried that shit with Christina. Look how she grew up to be. She was rebellious. She was doing all type of craziness. Going to all type of little crazy ass parties. All type of stuff. And I feel like Sam needs a different approach. She needs to change things. Oh, not only do Dante got to deal with all that mess, he now got to be a damn groomsman at the wedding for chasing BLQ. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Um, I also feel like Chase and BLQ are going to have some some money challenges in their marriage because I, I, I peeped it. I peeped it already. I feel like they're going to have a lot of money challenges in their in their future marriage because 
when they were talking about the wedding and the honeymoon and stuff like that, and he was like, oh, you know, your family's already paying for the wedding. I want to pay for the honeymoon. And when she told him where she wanted to go and he said, are you sure? I felt like when he asked that question, that was because he felt like she only picked Palm Beach because that's what she felt he could afford. You know what I'm saying? She didn't want to say, you know, he felt like she was lying about where she really wanted to go. Because maybe where she really wanted to go was more expensive, more fabulous, more whatever. And she knew he couldn't afford it. I feel like that's going to be a, a issue in their marriage. I feel like money is going to be an issue because she's used to a certain lifestyle. And even when they moved in together and stuff like that, like he was worried about the, his apartment space and all that because she comes with a lot of clothes, a lot of shoes, a lot of handbags, a lot of stuff. And they don't have the room for it in his little apartment. So I feel like that's going to be an issue moving forward with them. You know, she comes from money. He comes from working class. So it's going to clash sometimes, I think. But I like the way she's handling it, though. You know, like she's not making a big deal about none of that stuff. She's not arguing with him about none of it, which is cool. But I don't know how long that, that niceness is going to last when it comes down to finances. I mean, how long is that going to last? I've seen stuff like this happen in real life, like where somebody who got more money than their spouse, you know, it becomes contentious. You know what I'm saying? It becomes an issue, you know, because the man starts to feel insecure when the woman got more money or she comes from more money. You know what I'm saying? Like she could buy this for herself or her family could take care of that for her. And you feel, you know, as a man, you feel fucked up because you feel like that's my wife. Her family shouldn't have to do this and do that. I should be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know where, if, if that's where this story is going. I'm here for it. I think it would be quite interesting. Um, But anyway... Finn is hard headed as hell. Finn is super hard headed. Like he just don't listen. How many times has Gregory told him to live his own life, back off, let him do him, you know what I'm saying? Let him have some say and control over his life while he can. Finn just refuses to back off. And I get it. It's hard for him to just feel useless. But he can't help his father. There's nothing Finn can do. I mean, here Finn was calling a doctor friend of his. Now you're calling your father's doctor. You know, trying to get updates on test results and all that type of stuff and his appointments and stuff. And he really thought Gregory wasn't going to find out about that. Hell, even Gregory told Liz in a very respectful, nice way to back off. You know, when she was his nurse in the room, she was like, he was like, don't you got, you know, as head nurse, don't you got something better to do, you know, other than being here with me? Because he knew exactly what she was doing. And he was like, listen, I'm trying to keep my diagnosis and my doctor's appointments to me. You know what I'm saying? This is me. I want to keep it away from my personal, like people, other people, including her, because she's connected to Finn. And I don't blame him for that. And he handled that respectfully with her. He wasn't rude. And, you know, even Liz realized that's what he was basically telling her to get lost. But he said it in a more polite way. Um, and Finn just isn't getting the message. So once Gregory chewed his ass out again, now Finn wants to tell uh, Elizabeth, oh, you, I think you were right. Duh, Sherlock. Duh. That's why I'm glad Chase is, you know, Chase is a lot smarter. He's taking the hint. You know, he's focusing on his wedding. That's what his father wants him to do. Focus on his life. Don't worry about his doctor's appointments and stuff like that. But Finn just can't help himself. He's like a little busybody, like until you get your ass chewed out. Mind your business. Um, I like the little friendship or whatever situation shit between Tracy and Gregory, though. That man called her a vixen. I know that made her day. <laughs> Tracy probably ain't been called a vixen in 30 years. I'm like, Tracy, look at you. That man will called you a vixen. <laughs> Can you imagine being late 70s and being called a vixen? I know that's just such a boost of self-esteem for her. I know it is. Um, to see that somebody still looks at you in that manner. Oh, you a vixen. I was like, oh. <laughs> you better go ahead, Tracy. Tracy be flirting with that man. Um, Cause she is definitely not happy about him going to the wedding with Alexis. Definitely not. But I like they little back and forth exchanges. Um, I ain't gonna lie though, Tracy and Stella. That's the friendship I did not know I needed, and I love that friendship that they're creating. You know, it was funny watching Tracy. You know, talk about Lila and all the friends she had. And, you know, stuff like that. And Stella was like, oh, you must take after your father. <laughs> I love the banter between them back and forth. I love it. Because I feel like that's going to be a good friendship. I feel like Stella will keep 
Tracy grounded. She will keep her humbled, you know. And I loved how Tracy was asking Stella why she not retired and stuff like that. And Stella was like, what the hell am I supposed to do? Retire to what? To knit? I don't blame her. I mean, you know, a lot of people look forward to retirement and stuff like that. But it's harder to retire when you're actually doing things that you love doing. You know, when you're doing work that has a purpose. You know what I'm saying? You're really helping people and you enjoy it. It's hard to retire from that. You know what I'm saying? Now, when you got jobs that you just doing it for a check and a 401k and stuff like that, it makes it a lot easier to retire, you know, because you're not doing something that you really enjoy doing as work. You know what I'm saying? So it makes it a lot easier for you to just be like, all right, cool. I'm done. I am finally at the right age, the right money. I can retire. But for people like Stella and stuff, you know, they're doing what they love doing. So it's harder to walk away. So I don't blame her for not retiring just yet. Um, and I love how Tracy talked about the societal friends that she has. You know, like her her society friends, you know, like when she goes to charity events and they do luncheons and stuff like that. I like how she worded it, you know what I'm saying? Because she knows the difference. Those are not her friend friends. You know, these are just high sedity, other wealthy people I hang around for, you know, status and, you know, stuff like that. But they're not people I would be vulnerable around. I would, you know, call when I'm going through something or when the family's going through something. Like, they're not real ride or die friends. They're just, you know, your well-to-do wealthy friends that you talk to about caviar and, you know, the latest this. And, you know, I love how Tracy put that, you know, and I love how Stella talked about her friends back in, you know, Be More and how they played poker. And, you know, I'm happy that her and Tracy are going to, you know, have poker games and backgammon games. I'm, I'm here for their friendship. I really am. I'm happy about it. Um, but I think that's pretty much everything in this episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.